Welcome to my stair light project, which, when it's dark, automatically lights your way with a strip of LEDs. First you'll see five of my light patterns, then I'll show you how to build it yourself. I was moved to design this set of patterns by the feeling I get when I see the magnificence of the stars while lying in the cool grass in some dark, obscure field. My first pattern is simultaneous comets, red and blue. When these comets cross paths, they merge their colors so they'll show purple. The pattern begins when a motion sensor is tripped either at the bottom or top of the stairs. The pattern usually finishes its cycle in 25 seconds. For the following light patterns, I've added some post-production sound effects uh, for ambience. I hope you enjoy them. The Heaven Tree of Stars Hung with Humid Night Blue Fruit James Joyce, Ulysses. Greetings, I'm Speak Wilson, and I hope you liked those light patterns. Before we get started with the tour, I'd like to thank Eric Brown and Pascal Girard for their help in getting me started. Now let's dig into the details, and I'll show you how this works. All right, so uh, let's get down and start talking about the, uh, the brains of this project and how it fits together. Uh, so on one hand, uh, we've got a bunch of sensors. Uh, that are going to send signals in. So this first sensor, uh, so this one right here, this is the light sensor. And if it's dark, uh, the light sensor says it's dark, so now we can start lighting the stairs. If it's light, obviously it won't light the stairs. The other sensor is right here, and this is a motion sensor. And uh, there's one at the, the bottom, this is at the bottom of the stairs, there's also one at the top. And that's connected uh, by these wires here, which run up and they fit nice and snugly in the molding of the baseboard. These sensors all plug into the microcontroller that is inside this housing. Uh, so what you're looking at here, this is a, uh, it's a Metro a mini uh, microcontroller. It is uh, based on the open source Arduino hardware and software platform. It is sold, uh, this this version is sold by Adafruit.com. Um, and where that's where I bought most of the components for this project. The uh, microcontroller, you can upload software to it through, uh, through this, uh, this connector here and so if you when I want to change the uh, the lights and you know the patterns I, I will plug that into my computer and I'll sit at the bottom of the stairs and I will uh, code away at you know midnight it's sort of a fun way to spend your evening 
um, there are a couple of power sources to, uh, to run this project. Uh, one is running here, and that, that fits into for the controller. There's also another which goes to the lights. The lights require a lot of current, so they require their se a separate power source. Uh, they both plug into the wall over here, so you can see that. Um, now let's go take a look at this housing. So this is uh, 3D printed, and that was a little bit of an adventure for me. I'd never 3D printed anything before, and it sounded kind of cool, and it was pretty fun. It's easy to do. Uh, the software that you use to do it, um, that I, there's lots of free software. The software I used is called SketchUp. Um, then once you finish your design, you can upload it to a site called 3D Hub, which uh, where, where a lot of people who have bought 3D printers um, sort of are financing their printers, I guess, by um, will print, printing out people's projects for them. And so, you know, it's a convenient and easy and, and the people there are great they'll help you get it done so that's how i printed out uh, printed out the different housings and wire covers for this project that was sort of fun as well and that's one of the great things about the project which was that there was just a lot of learning to be done and so you know i was learning how to code uh for the arduino for the microprocessor i was learning how to do 3d printing i was learning how to solder because some of this stuff needs to be soldered together um, and you can see right here that the, uh, the microprocessor is plugged into a breadboard and, um, you know, that's, that's a solution. Probably a better solution would be to use a perf board and to solder it in and that would be, you know, permanent. This gives me some more flexibility to take it out and put it in. Um, although, you know, it might not last forever, but you know, nothing lasts forever. So the outputs, uh, uh for the, um, microcontroller, it comes through here, down the baseboard over here to the NeoPixel strip. And this is also a product uh, made by Adafruit.com. Um, each pixel is has three LEDs inside it, a red, a green, and a blue. And by manipulating the colors, of each of those pixels, you can make it be any color you want. Um, each pixel also has an address. So the first one down here, that's you know pixel zero, and then all the way up through pixel 180. If, uh, if this was a very short strip, uh, I wouldn't need the extra power uh, cord that I have set up. Uh, but since it's, it's pretty long, you, uh, you, know, you need to be careful with your coding because you know, you're sending signals all up and down this wire uh, all the time. Uh, so if I want to code purple, uh, if I want to code this pixel purple, for example, I would say, uh, you know, pixel number six, um, 50, a value of 50 for the red LED and a value of 50 for the blue LED. And then, you know, pixel number six would shine purple. And then you just use your loops and your coding to get all of the pixels to the colors you want them to be. Uh, at the end of this video, uh, there's a, a picture of the schematic that I use to sort of set all these things together and all the pieces that, how they fit. Um, and then in the description, I've got a list of the materials and uh, links to uh, some code if you wanna do this that you could use to get started. Um, and then you can you know, go out and be creative and you know, figure out, you know, what you want to do in one dimension and uh, do it. It'll be really cool. Thanks so much.